Hello and welcome to Hexed Encounter. My name is Joe. Today I'm going to be continuing my series on Skies Above Britain from GMT Games designed by Jerry White and Gina Willis. In uh, the first video I did the, uh, the scenarios that covered the dogfight cycle. So if you did not watch that one, you might want to check it out as it does include some of the uh, background info on the game. I'm just planning to kind of go right into the topics of this particular video which is the bomber cycle so i won't go over what you know what all the game is about etc etc obviously you probably if you're watching this you probably know what the game is about and uh so the game has uh laid out the rule book is laid out in such a way that you can basically learn the game in a modular fashion and the first thing you learn is the dogfight cycle that's why that is why rather it is the first um topic of my video series and this one will cover the second piece which is the bomber cycle which will be followed by the interception sequence in a subsequent video and eventually we will have the entire game system in hand and you can play campaign and various scenarios etc so without further ado we are going to pick this up with the bomber cycle Okay, so we don't actually need to even use any of the, uh, the boards or anything for this. We just kind of put it, put um, put our little um, aircraft out here on the table with the uh, one of the two bomber decks. There is a bomber deck for light bombers, which would be the Stuka, and there is one for the medium bombers of the Luftwaffe, the uh, the Heinkel, the Dornier, Dornier, and the uh, Junkers. So we will be uh, using medium because the scenario number six, uh, which is the first scenario of the bomber section of the book, here is scenario number six. Uh, this one calls for a uh, Junkers 88 as your, your target aircraft. So this is basically a single British hurricane fighter taking on a already damaged Junkers 88 bomber. Uh, the situation is 12 August 1940, 32 squadron scrambles at 1740 hours and spots a raid of JU-88s crossing the coast near Portsmouth. 188 appeared to detach itself from the main formation, reported Flying Officer John Humpherson. I went into attack. I put in a short burst. You control Humpherson's Hurricane Green One as he targets the lone straggling bomber and tries to bring it down. So our special instructions were to place a Junkers marker and green leader, her, which is a hurricane, on your green uh, on your game table. They comprise the bomber formation area. In this case, the straggler is a bomber formation of one aircraft. And we'll talk about the various formations as we go through this. For bombers, um, just as we had, uh, you know, the uh, formations for the fighters in the dogfight cycle. Uh, the approach step of the bomber cycle has already taken place, so situate green leader so that it is approaching the bomber's flank. Begin this training scenario with the burst setup of the bomber cycle. Okay, so when we talk about the, uh, the various parts of the bomber cycle, there are uh, basically here on this board right here is the bomber cycle. So you have approach, burst, disengage, hit check, and then a resume question mark. Because just like the dogfight cycle, you kind of go back and start over. It's a little bit more complex than the dogfight cycle uh, because you have various um, vectors that you approach from. You can be no coming out head on at the nose, coming up from behind with the tail, and obviously from uh, the so either side, starboard or port. So uh, you, there's also timing issues, like you can have a delay if you're trying to get in front of or behind the bomber, except on the initial approach. So uh, after the initial approach, when you go to round two, if you're trying to reposition your fighter so that it is coming in head, head on at the nose or coming in on the tail, you have a delay counter that you would put in there to uh, mean that you don't see. It says here, delay marker prevents combat. 
So you get bumped back a, a round, essentially. So that is the bomber cycle in a nutshell. So we have this set up here. Here's our green one liter. It's a hurricane uh, by piloted by flying officer John Humperson. And we have our JU-88 here with two damage chits drawn randomly. One is engine and one is wing. The damage chits for bombers are drawn just like they are for the fighters. Um, when your when your RAF fighter takes damage, as you can see on here, it says um, hurricane or H U R here at the bottom. And if you flip it over, spit. So because the hurricane, uh, both you know, they're two different aircraft. Obviously, the hurricane was better armed for dealing with bombers, while the Spitfire was a better uh, dogfighter. So it was better for the Spitz to deal with the with the uh, ME-109s and 110s, while it was a little bit better for the Hurricanes because of their armament to deal with the bomber streams. So, um, or bomber formations, I guess. I don't know that the Germans use streams. I might be thinking 8th Air Force stuff there. So we are going to get this started here. The, uh, the first step would be to draw a card. It's a card-driven game. We do have dice, and I will bring my dice tower in. I might leave it out of the shot, only because I like having this nice and tight like this. So we draw a card, and just like the dogfighting cards, you have a, a small grid here with rows and co um, columns, rather, in rows, right? So you use your approach, will determine which column you're in, and then the size of the bomber formation you're attacking. So if you're attacking the whole big group formation, you would be using, there would be tiles, which look like this, and they would be kind of uh, put together into a big formation where they're all touching each other. That would be this. Then if you can break them apart, into a uh, keta, I believe it's called. Then you have the single car, single tile basically, and you have a, three bombers in there. And if you can break one of those bombers out, make it fall out of the formation, you have your single bomber. And when you're fighting, uh, as you bring this down and break it up, each one, the damage you can do increases. So your, your best odds of really shooting these guys up is when you get them, get them alone. When they're in formations, as the formations get bigger, they're harder to uh, harder to take down. So we are on st um, we are approaching from the left. So we will be in here in the starboard or port area because it's a side approach, and we are we're not we're not dealing with the big formation or the the keta. We're dealing with a single bomber, so we're in this column right here. So. This symbol, just like it was in dogfighting, indicates damage to the enemy aircraft. So you have damage right here, all right, and it's bomber. So you draw a damage marker for the bomber, apply it to the bomber. If there's a number printed on the marker, roll a die to check for catastrophic effect. And if it's equal to or higher, then it triggers the effect. And if it's a cockpit hit, the bomber is destroyed, uh, place a destroyed marker on it. Um, the, the explosion also indicates destroyed. And then this is fallen. If it's in formation and you get a damage marker with this sim kind of down arrow symbol on it, that means the bomber falls out of formation, which is what you are trying to accomplish as kind of a stepping stone to actually destroying the bomber. So here's our cup with our damage chits in it. We pull it out. We look at the hurricane side and we do have a number here of 12. And it's a hurricane chit. This is the hurricane side with the destroyed uh, symbol on it. So if you hit, if you roll the die and you get a 12, and it's a 12-sided die, so you literally have to roll a 12, then this bomber will be destroyed. So we're going to put this on our bomber, and I will bring this tower in real quick so you can kind of see the die roll here. And we rolled a 10. So as you can see, that's a 10. That is not going to do it. But we do have three damages on here now, and it takes four to shoot it down. So, but uh, before I move the card out of the way, we also have the bullet symbol, which is low ammo. So we have to put a low ammo on our green one here, green leader. 
and two of those will be no ammo and the fight will be over. So we draw another card. Oh wait, uh, so the next step after that is you actually get to go and disengage and then you can reapproach as part of the approach segment once you go back around. So if we had been hit, you would do a hit check, which is rolling the die, just like we just did to, to check for damage to your fighter. We did not have that. He did not hit us. We just inflicted damage on him and apparently used up enough ammo that we're now low ammo. So you can uh, approach again, you know, same angle, which I think is what I'm going to do. Because as I mentioned, if we were to try to go to the tail, then we would have to do a delay which means we couldn't attack this round. So I'm going to just come back in. Same thing. We're going to make the same pass at him that we just did. And we're going to draw another card. And again, starboard or port at the bottom. And then G with the uh, hit symbol. So if we go back to our icon results, G hit, green pilot. If the pilot is green, draw a hit marker and attach it to the RAF fighter. So for this, uh, for this particular scenario, he's not green. That is literally the only thing there, so this is a non-event. So then we would again disengage and again come back in and approach because we don't have to do the, the uh, hit the hit check. We don't have to do hit check. Resume because we're still engaged, so we just go back to the approach. And we'll go through approach and then burst where we pull our our card and then we would disengage and we repeat this cycle over and over again this is obviously very basic this is the basic uh, one aircraft versus one bomber version of the bomber cycle here so again now we have this okay this symbol is called what is it called it is called the dorsal gunner so it's right here, dorsal gunner, bomber suffers fuselage damage, place a dorsal marker on the bomber, henceforth cancel hits for RAF fighters in the tail approach. So you basically you shoot up the back of the bomber and you kill or uh, incapacitate the dorsal gunner, the, the tail gunner. This is actually um, the fourth damage anyway. So you would put this marker on it. But because there's four hit markers, that means he gets shot down. So the scenario uh, victory conditions are real simple. You, if you destroy him, you get a victory. Uh, if you di don't destroy him, but the green, but green leader doesn't end up being uh, shot down himself, that's a tough bird. And missing in action means your green leader got sent to the fate box, which means essentially that you got shot down and then your fate gets determined later on. So that is the end of scenario number six. As I mentioned, it was really simple. We will move on to scenario number seven. Okay, so here's scenario seven, finishing the job. 30 September 1940, 504 Squadron catches up to an outbound raid south of Portland and immediately makes a tail approach to engage the rear section, sections rather, Ketten of the HE-111 formation. So these are Heinkels. In the first few passes, red section damages one Keta sufficiently that it slows down and loses altitude, becoming isolated from the rest of the formation. Take control of the red of red section and finish off these isolated bombers. So we place red leader. So it's tail it's tailing one of the Heinkels on a bomber tile. The other two bombers each have one damage marker already. Draw randomly, but ignore any catastrophic effects. Start red and two anywhere nearby in the bomber formation area. They may approach from any angle, but remember to attach a delay marker for a nose or tail approach. The curtain rises on this training scenario at the start of round two. Okay, so the scenario will end when we continue the bomb cycle one round after another until bombers are either destroyed or your fighters are in fate boxes, no longer have ammo or are lost contact. In this scenario, once lost contact and RAF fighter will return to base. All right, so pretty straightforward. Okay, so here's our setup. Here's Red Leader. He's on the tail, as was mentioned, and lined up for a shot um, with no delay marker. Oh, I forgot to draw damages. So let me draw two damage here. Use the hurricane side. So See, now this, this would be one of the markers we would have to ignore because that would indicate falling out of formation. 
And then this one is just a simple wing hit. So each of those two guys has a wing, has wing damage. Um, this one has a delay marker because he's approaching nose on. This one has um, no delay marker because he's coming in from the side. And then we have red leader on the tail. So we are ready to, uh, to start. I guess I can put the delay next to him. So you can see red two is here, red three is here, red leader. So the first thing we do, we're all set up here. We draw a card. Now on this card, because we are attacking a Keta, we are using this one. These are the Ketan, which is the plural of Keta. So Ket, Keta, because it's individual. So he is attacking tail. So we have a hit a low ammo, and the R symbol, which we have not seen yet here, but that's return fire. Because we're attacking from the tail, the bomber has a tail gunner, and return fire, you draw a return fire marker, apply its result, and put the marker back in the cup. Exception, if hit or green hit, flip to its hit side and attach to the RAF fighter. Okay, so we'll apply, we'll apply the effects one by one. So he gets a damage, so I'm going to draw damage for the bomber. And we get a fuselage damage, so that will go on this guy right here. Then we get a low ammo for our red leader. We'll put that next to him. And then we draw a damage cup, which is the same, a same damage chits as you draw with uh, dog fights. So we draw it out, and you look at the back. And if there's something on the back, aside from a normal like hit symbol, then you would apply this. You would apply apply this instead of the effect. And what LC is is lost contact. So that means that red leader is going to be lost contact. So he would actually go. He would get one of these symbols, one of these uh, counters. And be lost contact, which means he falls out of the fight and returns to base, so he's out of the battle. And now we will resolve red two. Uh, that was actually, of course, a bad result for me because we have an RTB now, which is going to make it harder for us to meet our victory conditions. I'm going to draw a card for this one. So he's approaching side on, so he's in the starboard slash port. So he gets a dorsal, uh, dorsal gunner damage, a low ammo, and this five symbol with the number that indicates um, the opportunity for what's called distress which means they fall out of the formation so this will be a um a potential chance because we have to roll for it or no not roll for it you check the total number of damage and i don't think we're, we're not going to probably have five um, but i'll have to count it up so first thing we do is we pull our we put our dorsal damage chit on here Okay, so we apply this here. Now, the rule for the distress, because here it is right here. So distress. If fighters and markers on the bomber tile equals or exceeds the distress number, the bomber has fallen. Place a fallen marker on it and add a new bomber marker to the bomber formation area. So basically it makes it um, drop out of formation and it becomes a single bomber, which is, um, again, more easy to damage. So the way this works is we count it up. We have two fighters and one, two, three, four markers. So that's six, which is more than five, which is what's on the card, which means he falls out. So you take one of these fallen markers and we take that and we move this off and he's now fallen. And then we pull the um, we pull a chit for him, which I think... This is the this is it right here. So his yeah he'd be facing like this, and our fighter is here, and he still has his two his two damages. I'll just stick them next to his marker there. Let me move these up so they're actually in the shot. Move this up a little bit. So he's now off. Um, he's out of formation as you can see. So their keta now is down to two. And so because he has a delay, he doesn't get to, to do anything. Um, oh, I need to put the low ammo on him as well. I forgot to do that. So he's low ammo. But he's two points of damage and has fallen out of formation. So we would then proceed to the, um, 
the hit resolution, which we don't have. There was no hit to our, our aircraft. And then we would go disengage where he'd fall off. He stays because he's coming around. This delay basically represents them kind of flying around to, you know, they speed up to pass the formation and then get out in front of it or come up behind it, depending on what you're trying to do. So we're just going to replay. We're just going to bring this guy back in in the same way. Same thing we were doing before. He's going to come in from the side again. Um, we can actually we can actually change it up and have him come in from the other side. So he'll come in from the other side. Delay marker goes away. And you can resolve the combats in whatever order you want. So we'll start with our guy coming nose on because we haven't seen that yet. So nose, Keta, the green pilot um, hit, which he's not green. We're not using that at the moment. And so then we would also have one damage and a two for distress. So he's also going to end up falling out of formation because we already know we have... Um, one, two, three. So that's more than two. So we will uh, apply the damage first. So we draw a damage chip. And on the hurricane side, it has wing and a 10. So we roll our die. Let's roll our die here. Let's bring this back in real quick. And we got a two. So he did not, he is not destroyed, but he does fall out of formation and become a single bomber just like his friend. I'm just going to put him off to this side here and for now we'll leave that there and he gets his two his two damages as well. So now we have two damaged. We have this guy he's now flying by himself uh, as the Keta and so we will move on uh, to doing this one, re resolving this guy. So we draw another card. He's side on, so we're doing the starboard slash port. And he's a single now, so he just gets a damage. So that's actually a good card for us. We got one damage. We draw a damage chip, especially since it didn't have a low. And we get another um, another roll to check to see if we shoot him down. He's already fallen out of formation, so we can ignore the symbol. So, but he's now at three damage. I'll roll, if we roll a 12, which we rolled a 10 again. So we rolled 10 for this one twice, I think, or maybe that was the last mission. But so now we have three hits here, two hits here. Both these guys will disengage and come around for another pass. We'll have him come in again on the side. We'll also have him come in on the side just to kind of keep things moving along without doing delays. Um, so I'll start here with this one. We'll draw. So we're single again. So we do another damage, which will shoot him down, but we also got the ammo, which means we're going to be out of ammo. So he's going to be shot down. I'll pull for damage. He's got another wing hit. So that's four. He's shot down. We can uh, remove these. And remove this, and I'll put it to the side just so I know that he's been shot down. And he is now no ammo, so he will go RTB. So he's also out of the fight now, along with Red Leader. Red Leader lost contact, went back to base. Red 2 ran out of ammunition, also went back to base. So it is now on Red 3 to see if we can shoot this guy down. So we will pull the card. So we're down in the in the bottom row again. So we get the dorsal dorsal gun gunner damage and low low ammo. So that's three damages for him. So he's now got three damage and he has low ammo. Now we'll go out again. So we know he's got three damages. We'll bring him back in and start our next turn starboard or port we're again on single aircraft so we do get our fourth damage and we go no ammo so he's going to get flipped to no ammo we'll pull our fourth damage even though it doesn't really matter that damage is engine so that's it this guy is also shot down for 
four hits, shoot them down. So that's the end of that combat. He is also now no, no ammo and returns to base. And that ends our mission. So the scenario is over. So we can check our victory conditions here at the bottom. Uh, all three Heinkels are either fallen or destroyed. None of your RF, RAF fighters are in fate boxes. Well, we only shot down two, so we don't have this. Uh, tough battle. All three Heinkels are either fallen or destroyed, but at least one of your RAF fighters is in a fate box. We don't have that either. Um, stymied. At least two of the Heinkels remain in the Keta. They are neither fallen nor destroyed. Um, we're, I, it doesn't actually say... Um, Oh, well, yeah, because we don't have all three. So we're kind of in between Tough Battle and Stymied. We destroyed two, but one of them is essentially still in the Keta. Although I I may have missed, and maybe once the Keta is completely broken into three pieces, all three are considered to be out of it, fallen out. So I, I, I might be wrong on that one. I'll need to check that. But... Um, I'm going to say this was kind of like a draw, essentially. We didn't lose anybody. No one went to a fate box, and we did shoot down two of their bombers. So that is the end of scenario number seven, and we will move on to scenario number eight. Okay, so here we have scenario eight, a full basket. 15 September 1940, an afternoon raid by 27 HE-111 slipped through Bomb Portland as they exit B Flight 152 Hyderabad Squadron intercepts what they had been told was a formation of six plus. Instead, your eight or B Flight rather Spitfires are pitted against 18 of those Heinkels that are racing for home. So we're going to have six tiles of Heinkels in the pattern that is shown here on the on the page, and we're going to have red and green sections. So two sections of uh, Spitfires. That will be attacking them. Place the fighters so that each is directly behind a bomber. More than one may line up behind the same bomber if you like. They will attack the bomber one at a time and one bomber card at a time. Tail. B flight enters from high altitude and attacks from the tail on round one, so you must apply the tail penalty, which we have not talked about yet. If a fighter gets a hit result... From a return fire marker, flip the return fire marker over and then draw another hit marker and attach the higher number hit marker and put the other back in the cup. So you draw two hit markers and you have to apply the more, uh, the more damaging one, essentially. Um, this only applies on the first round. The scenario will end when we go through the bomber cycle one round after another until all your fighters are in the fate boxes, no longer have ammo or are lost contact. All right, so we will get this set up and get underway. Okay, so we are set up. Got my deck. Got my, uh, my, my group of six. So the way this works is when they are in formation, all the cards are touching each other. Okay, so they're all touching each other. They're in formation. We have 18 bombers here. Red, red section is here. Leader three and two. I didn't really organize them by number, but one, three, one, three two, essentially. Each one on this middle uh, keta, because if we can break this guy out, that will break apart uh, this whole bottom section, essentially. And then we have green section, leader two, three, on this bottom right keta. So, um, as it mentioned, we have to, we're having a high approach. So what that means is, as it said, if we get hit results, we have to apply them uh, with the penalty of having to draw two and apply the, the worse. So we'll start here with red leader on this guy in the corner. So again, now we're in this third column. And we're, so we're up here. We're on the tail. So we have an R, which is return fire. So we're going to have to draw two hit markers for that. And then nine... And this is disruption, which is roughly akin to our distress from earlier. So here's disruption. It's right above distress. If fighters and markers on the bomber formation equal or exceed the disruption number, the bomber tile is isolated and you separate it from the other tile. So this is actually what we are trying to accomplish. Um, and the number we got of uh, nine is actually kind of high. So... Uh, we, we will not be achieving that number because we only have six aircraft. 
or three rather attacking this one tile so so we will apply um, we have to draw two two damage chits so we'll draw two and we did no damage so this is kind of a bad bad draw for us so you look at the back um, actually I think it says you just look at the yeah, you flip it over so you ignore anything anything else. And we but we've got a nine and a six. So we have to apply the nine. So we put the nine here. And then when we get to the damage, um what is it called? The hit hit check, we'll have to roll against that nine to see what happens to our red leader. So now we'll jump to red three. Draw a card. He's also on the tail. So we get the green, which we can ignore. We get a low ammo. And we get a jammed. So we're we're 0 for 2 here. Um, so we get a jammed and a low ammo, as if jammed wasn't enough. So we get those two, and now we'll do uh, red 2. This one's much better, although we're still going to have return fire to deal with. Two damages, so double damage, low ammo, return fire. Okay, so we pull two chits out of here for our two damages. So we get a wing, and these are Spitfire, so we're on the Spitfire side. Wing with a possible destroyed if we can roll an 11. That's this guy right here. And then the other one is just a simple wing. Still two hits is halfway to uh, knocking him out of formation. Um, actually, it's this guy. Wrong aircraft. It's the red two here. So then he gets a low ammo as well. And we have to draw two markers for damage. And we get a 10 and a 4, so we know we're, we're applying the 10. So we'll have to check that as well, and the 4 goes back in the cup. Okay, so now we've done with red, and we would go to green now to resolve these three, and then we'll move on to uh the next round, resolving our hit checks and so on and so forth. So green leader on this Heinkel here. Again, tail on the big formation. We can ignore the green because he's not green. So double hit, low ammo. So again, that's a pretty good, pretty good result there. So we get engine and fallen out. So he's going to fall out of formation. And we get a wing as well. So take that so he gets a fallen marker and I'm just gonna pull him back uh, we'll put him over here I guess it doesn't matter he's out of formation so we'll just put a single bomber here with the two hits he's now fallen out of formation green leader is still on his tail green leader gets a low ammo marker low ammo for him and then we move on to green two so we will draw a card so he's on the tail here of this middle one and we have again we're in the the top cot the top row rather the green doesn't matter and then you have the 10 for um the 10 for disruption <laughs> i couldn't remember so you have the uh, the 10 for disruption. So again, uh, how that works is you add up all the elements on the card, and that will tell you um, if it adds up to 10, then you can uh, break this Keta apart from the, from the formation. That is not what happened. There are no other things on here since he's not a green pilot. So that essentially is, uh, is a non-result. Non and uh, we move on to green three. And green three does have a result here. He's got two hits and a low ammo. And again, the green pilot. So he's going to do two damage. And we pull two out. And these are Spitfires. So we get engine and a fall out of formation. And then we get a wing. So we'll put this here for the moment. And then he gets a low ammo as well. So grab a low ammo 
and it goes with three. So that uh, that mark there indicates that he falls out of formation. All right, so we're going to pull him off here, just like we did with his with his mate over there, and we'll just kind of move move him here. We'll get another lone bomber. Put him there as well with his two hits. And he gets a fall in here. So this uh, this Keta is in rough shape. It is down to just one, one bomber. Okay, so that will actually complete this round. And so then we would go to the next uh, sta stage here, which would be the, the um, disengage. So we're going to disengage. So all of these guys, I'm just going to pull them back, basically, because I don't know that I'm going to really change the attacks that much. But um, we'll just pull this guy back. And these as well. And then we got to check our hits because that's the next step. So pull these back. So, okay, so we have two hits, a nine and a ten. So this is a tough situation here. Let me bring in my dice tower. So I'm gonna roll for here for a red leader. We need a nine, 10, 11, or 12 to make this trivial and have him stay in the fight. We rolled a 10. So that is great news. He stays in the, he stays in the fight. Now we need a 10 or 11 or 12 for uh, red two. We got 12. <laughs> All right. Good rolling. Uh, I'm used to rolling really poorly in general in most games. So that was uh, that was nice. All right. So once you've done your hit check, then you go to the resume, which basically cycles you back around to the beginning, to the approach. So the way it works with when you start on the tail, you can stay on the tail and not have a delay. If you do decide that you want it to go to a nose approach, then you have to have a delay. Um, but if you don't go, if you're not going for a nose approach, if you're going, staying on the tail or going for a starboard or port, then you can, uh, you can go without a delay. So what I'm going to do here is we'll keep, uh, we'll keep green two on the tail of this Heinkel here. And all these tiles are still together. So you can only break them apart by basically either destroy, <laughs> knocking all the bombers in on you know in the on the tile off, which we've done twice here. So if we were to knock him off, the tile obviously would go away. Oh, or to get the disruption, uh, the disruption result on one of our cards, which would be this this guy here, and have the number of markers and fighters that equal or exceed that number will will break it break it off from the rest of the formation. So we have not done that yet, and so we're going to continue. As I said, green two will stay here. We'll put green leader still on the tail here, and uh, green three will stay on the tail here. For this one, I think what we'll do is we will have um, we have red two on the tail, and I will keep red leader on the tail of that one. And red three uh, will also, I'm gonna keep them just on the tail, I think, for now. It's tempting to double up. You can have multiple uh, fighters, rather, attack a single bomber. Um, you know, I could approach them even in, in like in a chain where you have, you know, he comes in behind red two and also attacks the tail of this, of this one. Um, you can do that. You can and and what happens is if you say we knock this guy out of formation, or he gets destroyed, then the the it's not like they get to pick another target. They have to follow through with their attack as well, which also could result in damage or low ammo or whatever for the for the fighter as well. So actually, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put him on the tail. I'm gonna continue to keep them spread out, try and maximize uh, hits as much as possible between various aircraft. Which may not be the smartest strategy, but that's how I'm choosing to go with it here. So we're going to pick back up. We've got everything laid out again. We go back to our um, 
burst. We don't have anybody with a delay because we didn't approach from the nose or anything, so we're just going to draw a card. We'll start with red leader. We're still in the formation area of the card here. So the green won't apply. We do get a low ammo marker, and we get a 7 for um, disruption. So if we count them up here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we don't have seven. So we, the goal, my initial goal with having red attack this center tile was to try and break it out so that these guys would be isolated. Because then you move to this cop, this row, and you get better um, damage results. You can see damage, damage, damage on this card. Uh, the C here is actually collision. So you can have your fighter and uh, its target bomber actually collide midair collision. Obviously, that's a bad day for both aircraft so we'll move on to red three with our center heinkel here we'll draw a card um okay so uh actually i screwed that up i looked at the wrong thing i just realized that we're on the tail and i was looking in the nose column so my mistake luckily i caught it low ammo which i also forgot to put there but it's a three we successfully are going to break this this Keta off and break this formation. So what that does is he gets a low ammo. So let me grab that. So he has a low ammo. So I'm going to pull him off for a moment. And I'm going to actually pull all these guys back just for the, just for a second. And then we're going to take these two tiles and I'm going to split them off. And I'm going to pull this one down. So now the only tiles that are actually not isolated are these three. The rest of these, any attacks on this one, this one, or this one, will now use this center row, this row, which means we get a better chance for damaging the aircraft. So that, that was good. So he doesn't get any damage on that card, but he made the formation move. They had to adjust to the attack, so they broke apart. And now we've got three isolated Kettas here and three together at the top. So obviously I don't think we'll have enough um, aircraft because you run out of ammunition. Uh, fuel would also be a, a consideration depending uh, if we were playing like the full game. But we can maybe do some damage to these two tiles, which would be the ideal. So that is red uh, red leader, so we'll do red three now in the center So red three we're still on the tail. We are in the center row now So we do have a green result which we ignore We get one hit and low ammo. So another low ammo. He already had low ammo. Oh, and he's got jammed So what happens when you have jammed? So let's look at the uh, the trusty handy uh, player aid here Jammed guns attached to the fighter. Each time it garners a damage result, roll a die, even apply the damage result, odd, cancel the damage result, and remove the jammed marker. Okay, so we're going to roll. We're going to roll and see. We get a 10. So that is an even. And even means apply the damage result. So we do draw damage. Draw damage, and we get cockpit which is outstanding because that means he's going to be destroyed as we look here on our again on our player aid for damage cockpit the bomber is destroyed place a destroyed marker on it we shot him down so let's put a destroyed marker on here and he has been shot down i'll throw that back in there so he's still jammed but he's also no ammo now so red three is going to rtb but he gets a uh, job well done because he did knock that uh, that bomber down. So that was that was quite nice. So now we'll go on to uh, Red Two, who's already low ammo. He's on the tail of this particular bomber, which has two damage already. Draw our card. So again, column, middle row here. Tail column, two damage, so we're going to shoot him down, and we're also going to run out of ammunition. 
So he's going to go no ammo and have to RTB. We'll draw two damages um, just for the sake of showing the, the drawing of the damages. We get a wing and a fuselage. I won't bother to put them on there because he's been destroyed. We'll take that, throw that in there. He gets a destroyed marker. He goes RTB. And we now have, we'll now move to green. And I'll stay with the one that's actually still on the tile. We'll start there with uh, green two. And we'll draw a card. So he's on the tail. They're broken apart now. So we get a jammed result. So he's going to get a gun jam and no damage. So uh, not particularly ideal, but uh, it is what it is. Let's get that on there. Okay. Now we'll move over here. We have green leader on one of our uh, lost sheep here that has fallen out of formation. He's already on low ammo. We have two damage. Hopefully we can pull something with two damage. He's on the tail. We have here no damage. We get a return fire and he's going to be out of ammo. So we have to draw a chit. And when you draw a chit for return fire, you look at the back first. And if it shows this, then it's a hit and you flip it over. So it's a four. He's also going to be no ammo. So he's this guy's going to basically get away, I guess. So no ammo. And when we get to the hit, um, the hit resolution, is that what it's called? Hit check. Hit check phase. We will pull it, we'll roll a die. And if we get a four or higher, he will survive, but he still has to RTB because he's out of ammo. So we'll do our green three here. Last, last chance for round two. And he gets. Uh, two damage and an out of it and a low ammo, which makes him out of ammo, ammo as well. So he's out of ammo, but the two damage results in this particular Heinkel being destroyed. So what I'm going to do is I'll remove this and I'm going to flip this to destroy just so it kind of easily lets us know that that aircraft has been destroyed. He's no ammo. He's going to RTB. And we will go um, back. To, now we'll do our hit check because all our all our all our combat is resolved. All our burst phase is resolved. After burst phase, you do disengage. So pull back, pull back, and we'll roll here for this guy who has a four. So we need a four. Pull my tower in. We get a four. So not a great roll, but good enough to avoid being sent to the fate box. But he does still have to RTB because he is out of ammunition. Okay, so we're down to two aircraft. We'll do, we, we go back to the resume, which sends us back to the top of the cycle. Just a reminder, here's our bomber cycle. Approach, burst, disengage, hit check, resume. So just did our hit check. We go to resume, back to approach. Same as before, you can stay on the tail. Um, so we'll do that. We'll stay on the tail here with these two guys. Now he's still jammed. So we get a 50-50 chance essentially of having a hit or removing the jammed marker. We have destroyed three bombers. So that's a pretty good result. This guy is now pretty much off the hook. But uh, we're going to continue, so we will do uh, Red Leader. So he's on the individual tile and on the tail. So we get two damage and a low ammo. So since he's already low ammo, he's going to be no ammo. We're going to do two damage. If we're lucky, we could get a we could get a cockpit hit, which would destroy him. But we're not. We get a fuselage and a wing. We did two damage to him, but our red leader is out of ammunition, has to disengage and return to base. Go to green, green two. He is also on the tile still. Tail, so we get six and jammed. He's already jammed. Um, as far as, as uh, the six goes, 
we have one fighter and he's got no damage. So I'm assuming that means that um, he's not going to fall out of formation. So we would then come pull this back out. He's already jammed, so I guess you ignore the second jam. And we move on to uh, the next round. So we disengage. There's no hits to check. We'll come back in. We'll go ra another round. We pull. We get two damage out of ammo, uh, a low ammo, and a, um, return fire. So a little bit. A little bit more to unpack here. We have to first check for the jam. So we roll two. So the hit is applied and the damage marker stays. We get a fuselage damage. And we roll for the second damage. And that's odd. So the jam goes away. Jam goes away, but it's only one hit. And so now we also get return fire, which means we draw a damage chit for this, for this. And we get an LC, which means lost contact. So he goes off because he's lost contact. So lost contact, he gets a lost contact marker. He's going to RTB. Our fight is over. Uh, I don't need to stick the low ammo on him because he's out of the fight anyway. So he's going away. They go home. Nobody was shot down. Nobody was sent to the fate box. They all live to fight another day. Put this card out. And so that will complete this scenario. So if we look at our victory conditions for scenario eight, uh, victory destroyed or made fallen six or more bombers and three or fewer spitfires or in fate boxes. We didn't do that. Um, tough day you destroyed or made fallen. Six or more bombers, but four or more fighters are in fate boxes. Nope, we get disappointing any other result. So we did shoot down three, damaged a couple more. We broke apart this formation. Um, kind of a mixed bag result. Nobody was uh, sent to the fate boxes, so that was good. Um, we shot them up a little bit, but not enough to actually garner a reasonably uh, successful result. So now it is time to move on to scenario number nine.